All right, solutions to problem 56 off the math subject, GRE practice exam. Uh, we're given three statements here and asked which of the following are true. So the first statement is there exists a constant C such that the log, natural log of X is less than or equal to C times the square root of X for all X greater than or equal to one. Uh, this is a true statement. Uh, intuitively, you can kind of get there knowing that the square root of X grows quicker than the log of X. So if you can get over any early difficulty by choosing a large C and then the long run, the square root of X will overpower this guy. But that's all very informal. You probably want to do it a little bit more formal than that. Um, so let's talk through how we can get through that. Um, it's important that our, we have this distinction here that X is greater than or equal to one because if X is greater than or equal to one, we have kind of a starting spot. So we can kind of think about when X equals one. If X equals one, the natural log of one is zero. Uh, and that's because e to the zero power equals one. And that is less than or equal to c times the square root of one, which is just c, right? There's a constant c that'll make this true. Uh, in fact, any non-negative constant c will make this true. So, okay, this there's hope. This looks like it has a chance. Um, but can I be sure that this thing is growing faster than this thing here? Well, when we're talking about growing, we can think about the derivative. So the derivative of natural log of x is one over x. And the derivative of c times the square root of x would be what, c over 2 root x. So let's, uh, I don't know, let c equal 2 maybe to make this easy. Then I have 1 over x on this side, and I have 1 over the square root of x on this side. And anytime x is greater than or equal to 1, I am guaranteed to have 1 over x be less than 1 over the square root of x. And the way you can think about that is x is going to be bigger than the square root of x, and 1 over a big number ends up being smaller. So 1c we could choose would be c equals 2. When c equals 2, we start out with a true statement, and this is always true for any value of x greater than or equal to 1. So this side is always growing faster than this guy. So he starts out leading the race, he gets a head start, and he's quicker at any moment than this guy. So of course he's always going to be quicker. Okay, that was stupid. Uh, what about this second guy here? There exists constant C such that this sum, the sum from K equals 1 to N of K squared, the sum of squares here, uh, is less than or equal to C N squared. That's a false statement. Um, well, you might recognize that, that there's a formula for the sum of squares. Uh, there's probably a clever way to derive that formula. Um, I know the formula because... It's something you see when you get into induction, it's a very common thing that you prove that the sum from k equals one to n of k squared is equal to, uh, maybe I'll write this off to the side, the sum from k equals one to n of k squared is uh, n times n plus one times two n plus one over six, if I remember right. There's a bunch of these, the sum of k, the sum of k squared, the sum of k cubed, um, and it's an induction exercise to prove that it's true. Maybe I'll prove that at the end of this video. It's kind of fun, I guess, to prove that via induction. If you know that that's true, then the problem becomes super easy. If you don't know that that's true, there's probably another way you can get there, kind of clever. Um, I'm not sure what it would be. Actually, I do know what it would be. Uh, I think, well, I don't, whatever. I do know this, so I'm going to use this. So this thing on the left, I can really think of as this. And what I aim to show is that that's that it is not less than or equal to, so that that is for some value of n that is greater than c n squared, regardless of what you choose for c. So go ahead, pick your c real quick. You got your c in mind? Okay, if I expand this thing out right here, uh, I have n cubed, 2n cubed, I guess even, um, 2n cubed over six. And then there's a bunch of other terms that are all positive, so that's just adding to my case. I don't even have to worry about it, uh, the fact is that I have n cubed here, so it doesn't matter what you pick for c, n cubed is eventually going to overpower n squared. Uh, maybe your c is 100, then when n equals 101, you got 100 times 101 times 101, but I got 101 times 101 times 101 if I had n cubed on this side. I don't have exactly n cubed, I have n cubed over 3 I think is the leading term, um, but fine, just adjust it a little bit. Instead of 101, go to 200 or something, you got plenty of numbers. Uh, the point is... This is a false statement here, and essentially it's because this is a third degree polynomial and this is a second degree polynomial. So you can pick C as large as you want, I'll eventually beat you. 
What about this third one here? There exists a constant C such that, okay, so this one is kind of the most interesting of the three in my humble opinion. Um, sine of x minus x. Okay, sine of x is an odd function, not odd as in strange, but odd as in the height of this function at x is the negative of the height of this function at negative x. Um, and x is also an odd function for that same reason. And the difference of odd functions is also an odd function. So I have an odd function over here, and I have an odd function over here. And that symmetry will end up being kind of important or kind of useful anyways. Uh, sine of x minus x. Okay, well I know sine of x is this little wave function right here, so maybe I'll sketch it. There's my sine of x. Uh, sine of x minus x, you can think about this as, uh, well, y equals x is this diagonal function right here. This is y equals x and y equals sine of x. So if I take this guy and I subtract off this guy, what I'm going to get is a sine wave that kind of follows along this line right here. So here's y equals negative x. And to this, I want to add this height. So as far as this thing is over this line is how far I want my graph to be over this line. So like right here, for example, where the height of y equals sine of x is 0, my graph of y equals, uh, what am I doing, sine of x minus x will be right on this line. And right here, it's right here, and then it kind of goes up, uh, and I'm above the axis, so I'm above this line, and then through there, and through there, and so on. And sort of the same thing over here, it sort of looks like this, and like this. It stays more or less on this line here. It just kind of ducks a little bit above it and a little bit below it, according to sine of x. Never more than one above it, never more than one below it, um, because sine of x only goes between one and negative one. Anyways, here's y equals sine of x minus x. But really what I want is the absolute value of that thing. Uh, and then my other function is c times x cubed. So I don't know, generally speaking, it looks something like this is x cubed. I don't know what c is, but it transforms this thing. It should be flat right here. Anyways, y equals c x cubed. Okay, I drew all these without absolute values, but the point is I have lots of symmetry here. Because I have two odd functions, uh, really what I can do is just consider what is higher from zero to infinity. Um, and you're like, wait, what is higher? This thing's negative right here, right? So the absolute value will kick it up here. The absolute value, what I'm saying is I can just compare uh, x minus sine x aka the negative of this thing to kind of flip this guy up here to take account for the fact that because this guy is negative, this absolute value will always change it positive. I can compare this guy and cx cubed for x greater than or equal to zero. I don't have to worry about all this negative because of the symmetry inherent in these being odd functions. Um, and I don't even have to worry about my absolute value symbols if I account for the fact that this thing is going to be positive on this region and this thing's going to be negative on this region. So to get rid of the absolute value symbols, I just add a negative over here. These are the two things I'm going to be comparing. Okay, so my question is, is there a value of C that will make this thing always bigger than this thing? I don't know. Um, it's not obvious, at least not obvious to me anyways. So let's see. Let's start the race out at zero. What happens at zero? At x equals zero, I get zero minus zero. And C, I don't know what that is, but times zero Q gives me zero. Okay, so it's a fair race, right? We start at the same spot, uh, but then the question is, who is going quicker? Uh, so let's look at the derivative. So the derivative of this thing would be one minus cosine X, and the derivative of this thing would be three CX squared. And is one of these always bigger than the other one? Eh, I don't know, still maybe, but I'm a little bit, I mean, eventually this thing's going to overpower it, right? X cubed is going to get really big, and this thing is going to act kind of like X. So eventually this guy wins. But really, my only concern is what about when X is really, really close to zero? X is 0 0.0001, that idea. Is this thing going to be bigger than this thing? I don't know. Um, it's not obvious to me anyways. So let's go one, well, let's not quite go one step further. Let's look at this when X equals zero. If X equals zero here, I get zero minus cosine of zero is one. Oh no, sorry, I get one. There's a one written here, not a zero. I get one minus the cosine of zero, which is one. One minus one is zero, and three times 
c times 0 squared is 0. Okay, so the derivatives both start at the same spot. Um, let's take another derivative. Um, the derivative of 1 minus cosine x is 0. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So I guess sine x over on this side. And then for 3cx squared, I would get 6cx. Okay, now finally I can compare the two of these guys. If c equals 1, for example, I got 6x on this side and I got sine x on this side. And know that six, note that 6x is always greater than or equal to sine x when x is greater than or equal to 0. Um, and that's because sine x, when we started drawing this graph right here, we knew that the steepest it ever got was 1, right? It started out going up at a speed of 1. Uh, this thing's going up at a speed of 6. This thing beats the hell out of this thing. So what did I just show? I showed that these two guys are going to start at the same spot at x equals 0. I get a 0 here and I get a 0 here. So they start at the same spot, but this guy always beats this guy. This guy increases faster than this guy. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that if I go up one step, these two guys start at the same spot. They both start at 0, but this guy's speed is given by this, which is always greater than this. So this guy is always greater than this guy. So if this, maybe I can even write these in here. This guy is always greater than this guy for uh, x greater than or equal to 0. And I'm letting c equal 1 in this spot. OK, so now I compare my functions. They both started at the same spot. This represents the speed of this guy. This represents the speed of this guy. They start at the same spot, but this guy is always going faster than this guy. So what that means is this guy is always going to be ahead of this guy in this race. So there is a value of c, 1 will do, for example, uh, that will make this always bigger than this thing right here, if, as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. And if this is greater than this when x is greater than or equal to 0, then this is greater than or equal to this, regardless of what x is equal to, because I get when x is less than or equal to 0 using the exact same arguments uh, over on the left side here. So what I have proven is that this is a true statement. And so 1 and 3 are true, and I guess that would be answer D. Did I know that before I even looked at this? No, I guess I didn't. I knew that this wasn't the answer, and that wasn't the answer, and that wasn't the answer, but I wasn't sure if it was B or D. So that last argument that I did on this 3 here really was necessary. Anyways, that's the answer.